Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at another HG The Witch from Mercury kit. This is the standard slash Lada's Delanza kit. So we previously took a look at the Ghoul's Delanza kit. This one is now in different colors and it comes with different option parts to make one of two different variants for this. So very cool, awesome kit. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right guys, so starting us off, taking a look at the box here, we got both versions shown there on the front. You can build this as either the standard type or Lauda's Delanza. This is cool that you're gonna have some variation parts in here that you can choose from. You can mix and match, of course, with Google's Delanza too, if you really wanted to. But some very cool painting style and lighting and effects and everything here going on with the box art for this once again. On the side of the box here, you can see this is number 05 in the lineup. And on the bottom of the box here, we got a look at some different action shots there of the kit in its different forms, a lot of form and the standard Delanza there with just the single horn. Some different shots of the articulation and everything. And here it is completely unpainted. Looks very nice. On the top side, there's a look at how the kit is going to look fully painted there front and back. And then front in the Lauda's Delanza's form, I guess from the back, it's gonna look basically the same. Oh, well, the backpack is gonna be a little bit different. The standard form has no spike on it. And the Lauda's Delanza has the one big spike there on the back. If you guys remember, Ghoul's Delanza had a two on the back. So there you go. There's a little bit there about the Witch from Mercury. And with that, we can go ahead and open up the box here. So obviously most of this stuff's gonna be familiar from the Ghoul's Delenza. But just taking a look here at the manual, you got a little bit of information down there. It's in Japanese and in English about Lada Neil, the pilot, and then a little bit about the machine itself there as well. Around on the backside, some very nice line art here, information about the weapons and accessories that you have included with both forms here, as well as the shield. The color guide is over here on the side, going down the side there, that's in Japanese and in English as well. Opening it up, you've got your parts list right there, which is in color. The first bit of construction is also in color, and the next bit there, I guess, as well, but then the rest is just all gonna be in black and white here in the center. Let's go ahead and check out the runners. Our foil stickers for the kit here are gonna be pretty minimal, just the one there for the visors, well, two for the visor on the front, one for the rifle, I guess, there for the camera for that, and then a couple little black stripes. Runner A, we've got in three or four question mark colors here. You got one part there in white. Most of this is in that brownish gray color. And then these two shades of purple look slightly different to me, very slightly. It's very close, but you got a couple of purple parts over here and then another little bit brighter, more vibrant purple color, it seems like to me up here for the visor. Runner B is just some more of the inner frame and joint type parts there in that dark brownish gray. Runner C, a nice big full runner here of all of our armor pieces in that nice kind of pale bluish green color. A little bit more of that here on runner D2 as well. There you can see is our two different styles of antenna here for the kit. Runner E is gonna be our neon green beam effect part for the beam saber. And runner F is gonna be some of our weapons and equipment parts here, the giant ax, the big shield parts there. And this is once again in that brownish gray color and that's it. All right, so here's the kit all built up. And for the time being, as you can see, I have this built up as Lada's Delanza, but of course, later on in the review, I'll just switch out the parts, which is very easy to do to show you how it looks as just the standard type as well. You could also mix and match, which is nice. So maybe you really prefer one type of E-fin over the other, but you prefer one type of shoulder equipment over the other. You can just swap them and it's easy enough to do. So it's nice to have some options in the box. And as for those options, let's just go ahead and take a look at them. We have the same beam rifle here included with a tiny little green sticker there for the camera. And just like before, this will fit up into the shoulder armor, whichever shoulder armor you choose to use, this rifle will be able to be stored up in the shoulder there. And the same goes for the beam torch. Obviously, if you have the beam effect part omitted, this will fit up into the shoulder armor for storage as well. But just like with the Ghoul's Delanza, I have to say that the Beam Torch is a really cool looking weapon. Very nice take on the Beam Saber design. And then we just have the large heat axe, which is about 14 centimeters in height. This is going to be about the standard height of any standard 1 in 44 scale Gundam kit. As you can see here next to the Delanza, it comes up all the way just about to the tip of the V-fin almost there. So it's going to be pretty big. Doesn't weigh a whole lot though, so it shouldn't give you any weight issues. Kind of surprising that they didn't give us yellow stickers for that to make it look like how it does in the manual and on the box art, but all that would take is just some yellow paint on there, pretty easy mask on that, and then just spray some yellow or some gold on there might actually look quite nice. And for the antenna, you can swap that out for just the single horn there. For the backpack, you can remove that fin, 
and just put on just this cap piece like that that doesn't have any fin on it. For the shoulders, you're just gonna pop off that part. To make the standard type on one side, you just need to put in this little cap there. And for the other side, you're gonna take out this part, put that onto here for the standard type shoulder shield, which is much smaller there. There you have it, now we have the standard type. So easy enough, there's not any other changes that you have to make anywhere around on the body. It's just the shoulder equipment, the antenna, and that part for the backpack. So it's really easy to swap out those parts. The stickers we do have for the kit, those ones for the visor are gonna look pretty nice. They catch the light nicely to add that little bit of metallic blue. And aside from the one on the beam rifle, the only other ones we have here are gonna be these two here on the shoulder shields for the Lauda's de Lanza, and they're just like black stripes on an already very dark surface, so I feel like if you were to omit those, it wouldn't really change the look of the kit overall all that much, especially since they're like on the side like that. But other than that guys, not too much else to go into for this kit. I did cover all of the articulation in my review of the Gules de Lanza, so if you're interested, you can check out that review for the full overview of all of the articulation. But as you'll see, as I'm trying out just a few different poses here with it, you can see that the articulation is quite nice. It's a big, chunky mobile suit, so obviously some of the articulation is going to be a little bit hindered by that fact, but overall it's not too much hindered by its overall size and girth of the different sections of the kit. Overall, its articulation is really quite nice. And that's been something that so far is pretty standard for this line. All the kits have really nice articulation, very nice posability in them, very simple construction. So they go together really nicely and you have a really nice kit at the end of the day. I think this one would definitely benefit from a little bit of panel lining going in and just panel lining some of the sections, especially like around on the legs. There's a lot of nice little like vent details and stuff like that that would look really nice if they just popped a little bit more if you were just to go in there with the panel line marker and just bring out some of the details of the design, especially since the color scheme overall is like green and black essentially. To bring some of that black into the green by using a panel line marker to do that, I think uh, would look really nice overall. But if you already have the Ghouls de Lanza and you're wondering if it's really worth buying another one of the kits by buying this version, I would say in my opinion, uh, yes it is. I mean obviously it's just a color version for the most part, but the option parts in there are nice. You could use some of these parts with the Ghouls de Lanza if you wanted to make two different customs by mixing and matching them even more. I think that the custom option parts that we got with this kit definitely make it worthwhile for buying a second one of the kit, and it's just a really nice kit. If you like the design, if you're a fan of the design, I think it's definitely, in my opinion, worth picking up another one of the kit just to get some more options and just to enjoy both of them, because they're both really nice kits. Overall, the line in general has has been really nice so far I haven't had a kit that's been disappointing but this is only the fifth in the line so I'm sure we have a long ways to go by the time we're through but so far I'm feeling pretty good about the witch for mercury line it seems like it's gonna be a really fun one but let me know your guys thoughts down in the comment section below what do you think about this kit what do you think about the line in general so far are you enjoying it are you enjoying the anime it seems like a lot of people are really quite enjoying the anime which is good so that's awesome and I find that for a lot of people, if you're enjoying the anime, it just makes you enjoy the kits even more. So it should be one that you, know, you can really enjoy with this one. So of course, if you want to check this kit out or anything else from Bandai and an HG Gunpla or anything else like that, you can check the link to USA Gundam Store down in the video description below. Got all sorts of different mecha models there, paints, tools, and everything else you guys need. So check that out. All right guys, so adding an extra little tip or fix at the end of review videos is something that I want to start doing and so this is going to be an example of that and you guys will see this in review videos from time to time, not on every single review video going forward, but at the end of some review videos I want to just include a really short, simple little thing that you can do to improve the look of the kits. And for the Delanza here, one thing that I thought might look nice would be to make these gun barrels look a little bit more realistic here in the front of the chest and a really easy way to do this is just be to drill them out. And this Advice basic set from Mr. Hobby is a really great tool to have on hand for this. Now this is the USA Gundam Store branded ones that we sell here at USA Gundam Store. There is also just the regular set and the only real difference is just the colors but this one comes in these available drill sizes as you can see there and it's always good to start off with just something small and for this one this one millimeter size might be all that we need. We may not even need to go up but we'll start off with this one see how it looks and yeah, I think we can go up to the 1.5 and should be alright. And that's looking much better, but as you can see on this one, if you look really closely, you can see there's a little bit of rough edge around the side and you could try to sand that with like a really, really tiny little bit of sandpaper or a very small file or something very carefully. But another easy fix would just be to use some Tamiya Thin Cement. Now you really don't need a lot of this, you only need a really, really little bit, so when you take that out, just get 
all the glue off of there so that you really only have a little bit on the brush. Go in there and just brush that around the area that we drilled out. And what it, this is basically doing is just melting that plastic. So you have that tiny little bit of rough edge of plastic sticking up. And this is basically just going to melt it down so that it's nice and smooth and clean. Uh, it is going to add a little bit of gloss around that section, but a real easy way to get rid of that would be just to spray the entire kit with some matte coat and then that would be gone. But there you have it, real simple little fix just to help make those details on the chest look a little bit nicer. And that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. Thanks for your support, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. Really appreciate you guys. Until next time, have a good one. See y'all later, bye-bye.